Hello! So, welcome back to another video for this design series. So, I'm going to try and make this the last one. There's going to be quite a bit to cram into this episode. So, we need to add in quite a bit of the jQuery uh, animation, so the slider. We also need to add in, we need to change the font, sorry, of the actual design gallery text. So, with all that being said, what we'll do is actually add all the components in to get the jQuery slider to work. So, what I will do, if I open up my browser... So as you can see here, this is the jQuery.com website. Now we need to include the jQuery library on our web page. So the easiest way to do this is go to jQuery.com and I'll leave links to all of these things in the description below uh, and go to the download section, which brings you here. Now there's two ways of including jQuery on your page. One, you can actually download the file and put it into the JS folder we created earlier. So if I click here, download jQuery. It shows here the current release, uh, and the one you would want would be minified. Now, there's a better way of doing it, so I'm just going to go back up to the top, and you'll see here something called CDN Hosted jQuery. So if you click on that, now here, this is where it's hosted on the internet. So for example, there's a Google CDN, Microsoft, and the jQuery one. So I'm just going to use the, the Google one here, because it's the first one in the list. So all I'm going to do is actually copy this link here, and I'm going to head on over to Dreamweaver. So just above the style sheet, we're going to add the actual uh, jQuery library into the HTML file. So to do that, we have to open up a script tag like this. And then we're going to type in the word type. And in here, we're going to put text JavaScript. And then now we need to tell it where that is. So we need to give it a source. So SRC, I'm just going to paste in that link we copied from the jQuery website. And I'm just going to close that off with the script tag. And we've now included jQuery uh, onto our page. So the next thing we have to do is actually go and download the jQuery plugin to create this sliding animation backwards and forwards. So if I just open up my web browser again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close down the jQuery site because we don't need that anymore. The second site we need is this jCarousel Lite site. So again, this is the uh, URL to the site, which there will be a uh, link in the description below. So once you come here, all you have to do is go to the download link over here. And we want to download the minified version. So at this point of recording, the version 1.0.1. .1. So I'm going to right click on minified. And I'm going to click on save link as. And then what I want to do is go into the JS folder and just save it inside of our project. So that's that one done. So if we just go back over to Dreamweaver now. So if we come down to our assets panel down here and just refresh the page, you'll see we now have the J carousel. So we need to include this on the page also. So I'm just going to come down one line and open up another script tag. Give that a type and that will be text JavaScript also. And the source... Like that, and I'm just going to browse for that, which will be in the JS folder, and here it is, so J Carousel. And if we close that off with the script tag, and we've now included that. So that's the first stage is set up. So we also need to include our functions.js file. So I'm going to copy this to save a bit of time, just create a bit of space, and I'm going to replace all of this with the word functions.js. So yours should look like that. So with all that in place, we now need to start writing some jQuery to animate the slider backwards and forwards. So I'm just going to come down the page just so we can get an idea of what we're doing. Now, we've got the two buttons, so we need to target these two in particular. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to target the next BTN ID, and we're also going to target the prev BTN ID. So when you click on those, it slides backwards and forwards. So we're also going to target this slider here, because this is the div that contains all of the uh, images uh, that, we, that we want. So we need to target that one in particular so it knows which element to slide backwards and forwards. So if we open up our functions file, so in here, this is where we're going to write all of our jQuery to get this to work to slide backwards and forwards. So here we're going to open up with the jQuery, which is the dollar sign, and then we're going to say we want it to do something. So when the document is ready, so when the page loads, we want it to get this ready. So we're going to say we're going to open up a bracket and type in document, close the bracket, and we're going to say dot ready. So like I said, when the document is ready, we're going to create a function, two, two brackets, 
then a curly brace, and then a couple of returns, curly brace, bracket, and then close that off. So we've created the function. So inside of this, we need to tell jQuery to do something. So I'm going to create a bit of space. So again, jQuery with a dollar symbol, open up a bracket, quotations, and inside of here, we need to say what we want to target. So we want to target the ID of slider, like that. Close that off. So we're going to use the J carousel light. So we're going to type in J, capital C, A R, O U S E L, capital L I T E. Now you have to get the capitalization correct on this, otherwise, you'll have issues. And then bracket, curly brace, curly brace, bracket, and close that off. So now inside of here, just sort out the spacing like that. So inside of here, we need to target the, what the buttons are going to do. So we've told the, the J Carousel plugin we're targeting the slider, so it knows which element to target. And like I said, now it's just going to tell what the buttons do. So BTN next, so the next button, what's, how's that going to be animated? So we're going to open up the speech quotations, and we're going to type in ID of prev BTN. So if I just close that off like that. So remember this, this is the ID on the previous button. So if I go back to the index, here it is. So this is the previous button. So in fact, if I just select this and go to the design, you can see it's selected here, so the previous button. Now if we come down a line, we want to say BTN prev. So this is the previous button. Open up the quotation marks again. And we're going to target the next BTN. And again, we want to close that. So next, we're going to have to tell it how many um, list items we want to be viewable at each time. So at the moment, we've got one list item. So in here in the index, here's our one list item with eight images. Now, we're going to add another list item underneath this, which will have also eight images in. So we need to say we only want one of those list items to be shown at one time. So here, we're just going to say visible one. Just want one of those list items to be visible. So if I save that and come into the index, and if we come into the actual code, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to grab all of these, and I'm just going to paste a copy below like that. So it's exactly the same thing as what we had previously. If I go to the design, you'll see in Dreamweaver, we now have this uh, basically a duplicate of the eight images. So now if we go and preview this in a web page, so if you look at that, you're thinking it's all gone wrong. Now, if we click on this button here next, if you look at the images over here, you would notice it does actually move. Now, the plugin's working, but we just need to change the CSS ever so slightly to make sure that all the images are being shown, because at the moment, you can only see this tiny portion of the very first one. So if we just go back to Dreamweaver, and if we go into the CSS, you want to come all the way down to the slider with a UL that has a list item, and it should just say list style none. But on here, we need to give it uh, some width and height because at the moment we can't see anything. So to do this, it's quite simple. In here, we're going to give the list item, which holds all eight images, a width of 960 pixels. So if we just look at that now in the browser and hit refresh, you can see now that now we've added that width in, all four of the tops of the images are now being shown. So we just need to give it a height. So again, back over in Dreamweaver. So the height here, I think it's roughly, I can't even spell height, I think the height is going to be 400 pixels. So if I just save that, and again, if we preview that in the web page and hit refresh one more time, you can see that they've come out, and that is looking pretty good to me. So now, all I have to do, if I move my mouse here, you can see that they're now going backwards and forwards. Now, obviously, you'll be using different images for the slider, but I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. So that's that portion set up, so that's pretty good. The next thing we're going to look at is this H1 here, and we're going to change it to the custom font that I actually used in, in Photoshop, which was called Headline 1. Now, again, if, you, if you've used a different font, that's fine. You can still use that. So to sort this portion out, what we'll have to do is go over here to a website called Qfon, 
Now, again, there'll be links in the description to this as well. So it's coupon.chocolate.com generate. So again, this is uh, JavaScript based. So you want to click to download. So it gives you all this code here. So I'm going to do Control A, Control C to copy all of that. And back over in Dreamweaver, I'm going to right click on my JS uh, folder here. And I'm going to go to New File. And I'm going to remove all that and just type in coupon.js. I'm going to open that up. I'm just going to paste all that in and I'm going to save that. So what we'll have to do, we have to include that file on the page as well. So back up here, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it above the functions file because we want the uh, the coupon file to load first and then the, the code for coupon will load after. Uh, so that's that saved. So what I would do is actually go into your fonts folder. So if I just bring that up. So this is in your Windows directory and you need to search for the font that you actually use. So again, I use headline one, so I can type in headline and it brings me down to the font here. And all I did was I just copied this, so right click, copy, and I pasted that onto my desktop ready to be uploaded to QFont. So if we do that now, so back over here, I'm just going to go back. So what you need to do is come down to here where it says select the font you'd like to use and click on choose file and actually select the, the fonts that you copied to your desktop. So I've selected it here as you can see. Then you need to come down, you need to click on here. And then all you have to do is come all the way down to the very bottom and just click here. So you just accept the terms and all you have to do is click on let's do it. And as you can see a new window opens and we're now ready to save this JS file which is just a JavaScript file into our JS folder. So I'm going to do that now. So that's that portion sorted out so we can get rid of this and uh, the carousel. So if we just head on back into Dreamweaver, we now need to include that file. So we'll come back down to here to our Explorer panel and just refresh that. And you can see the new file is in there. So again, I'm going to copy this for a bit, save a bit of time, paste it below, and just copy this headline one um, title. So that's now headline one 400.font.js. So with that done, all we have to do is actually add in the code in the functions file to get QFON to actually replace the text on certain elements. Now, I only, I only wanted to change it on a particular element. Now, that one is going to be here. So it's going to be the H1. Now, if you just look at that in design view, this, all, this is all I want to change. So to do that, we can come in here. And then just after this section here, we can create some space. And all we're going to type in is QFON with a capital C dot replace. So we're going to replace something. So I'm going to create, open up a bracket, um, and then I'm going to single quotations here, and then in here I'm just going to type in H1. Close that off. Close that off. So we're telling here QFON replace the H1. Now, like I said, it's going to replace the H1 with the fonts we uploaded to QFont, so this one here. Now in Dreamweaver's, Dreamweaver's design view you don't see any change but now if I go back to the web page and hit refresh, keep your eye on this section here and as you can see that has, that has changed. So we need to just increase the font slightly and add a bit more spacing underneath. So back into Dreamweaver. We can get rid of the JS file for now. I'm going to go into the main CSS now I'm going to come all the way up to the H1, which is here. So I'm just going to change the font here from 60 to say 90 pixels. And if we just refresh that in the web page, so that's looking pretty good to me. What I just want to do is just kick this uh, section away from it a little bit more uh, like it is in the actual Photoshop design. So back over here, we're just going to add on here, we'll just say margin bottom of about 30 pixels and if we just refresh that one more time and that's kicked it a little bit further away which I quite like I'm probably going to move it down slightly from the top as well so back in Dreamweaver and we'll say margin top of 10 pixels in fact what we'll do we'll just reorder this because it doesn't, doesn't look very nice just put everything on its own line so if we just save that and if we just look at that one more time in design view 
and that is looking pretty good to me so we've got the slider working backwards and forwards we've got some custom fonts on the go using QFont so what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this design series here, so we've now got all the custom fonts on the go, nice jQuery slider, and all of that good stuff. I just want to thank everybody for leaving all the great comments that you do, everyone who's supported me so far. I've got more series coming up soon as well. Check out my website as well, which is mattsaundersmcp.co.uk, uh, as I'm going to be bringing more tutorials over there as well that are just on my site. So as usual guys, thanks for watching, please leave any comments below. Feel free to subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.